G'day guys, welcome back. Welcome to pouring your heart out. I am just going to sneak around the back of the table for a minute and I'm going to show you my holographic moulds that I've made because I'm going to pour into them today. So this one here, I'm hoping, let's put you on autofocus, I'm hoping it'll pick it up. You can still see the holographics on a white base like that. This is actually in the mould and it will transfer into the resin. That one's called Starburst. This one is called Shattered. Reminds me of Shattered Glass. So even though you can see them, they're not nearly as sort of predominant as they are on black, which I'll show you in a minute. And this one is Prism. So that's the three molds I'm going to pour into today. Um, this was one that I used using the silicone insert discs that I made. I just find, found them a little bit more difficult to use um, because you had to put the disc into a mold and had to get the right you know, size mold. Um, and then you had leakage underneath and um, maybe a little bit of a curve instead of a dead flat. So I thought, right, I'm just going to make some moulds. So that's them, all right? Uh, they are available in my eBay store if anybody wants them. Oh my gosh, they were so difficult to make. It's the most difficult moulds that I have ever made. Now I'm going to do, because like I said, if you've got a nice dark background, your holographic image will show up much more. So I'm going to do green, purple and navy. I've got a little bit of black ink here if I think they need to be a little bit darker. So I've got uh, 55 grams of resin in each of my little cups. I'm using this one here, the 360 plus by Platinum. That's what, I'm, that's what the bottle looks like. So I'm going to do, like I said, one with green. I've had these sitting in a hot water bath because they dried out, but now they're nice and runny again. So we'll just dip that in. I'll scrape the bottom, but leave the top on. That's the green. These are all by Lorez. This one's called Lucky Green. And then this is the purple. Scrape the bottom, but keep the top on. It is called Luscious Plum. And then the navy is Sapphire Blue. So I'm thinking I may have to add some black because I want them really dark. All right, let me just stir these up. And they've got a gorgeous sheen to them, so Hopefully we'll get that coming through as well, the sheen of that. See, it's, I mean, it is a lovely green, but it's just not quite dark enough. I want it almost black. So I will add a little bit of the ink. It's, um, what is it? It's, I've had this for years. Bought it years ago. Liquitex acrylic ink. It's not an alcohol ink, it's just an acrylic ink. This is that one. Just mixing over here so I don't spill on my new moulds. Actually, I might even put a little bit more paste in. They're looking a little bit, that one's looking a little bit transparent. I'm going to put another scoop in of each. I'm just going to wipe my stick over here on my paper towel. Just fast forward, guys, if you don't want to watch me do this. I'll just be a minute. There's no point putting you on pause just for the, the minute. All right, so that one's there, that one's there, that one's there. I'm going to put, I'm just going to put one drop to begin with of the black and see how much darker that goes. I mean, I don't want to change the color too much. I just want to see if I can perhaps darken it ever so slightly.
Okay. Don't know that one drop did very much, but I'll just give them all a stir and just see if it's changed. So basically all I'm going to do is pour these in um, and let them set. So we go another two. So that's three drops of ink in each. I probably should have done black paste actually. I don't know that ink is all that strong, is it? We should have done black paste. Okay. Yeah, the ink doesn't seem to, I think I probably have to put a lot of ink in to change the color. I'm just gonna grab my black paste. Hang on one sec, if I can find it. Um, what have I got that's got a, a squeeze bottle? How about this one? This is, um, this is my Cast and Craft black paste and it's got a little nozzly thing so I should be able to just squeeze in one drop. Oops, you, your drops were a bit bigger. There we go. Okay, let's see how that goes now. It's just all trial and error. I've never really tried to darken a colour with black, so I'm not really sure how to go about doing that. It doesn't seem to be changing it very much. Obviously it needs a lot of black to make it different. Oh, sorry guys, bear with me. Although maybe some of you are interested to see how to make a colour go darker. Okay, all right, let's go again. Another, do a bigger squeeze this time of the black. See if we can get it to go a bit darker. It takes a lot of colour, doesn't it? It takes a lot of black to make it darker. The green is the lightest anyway, so I think these two will probably go darker before the green does. All right. Um, let me just move these out of the way. Put you over here. Um, now... I don't know, you guys. All right, I'm going to go again. Another squeeze. All right, there we go. Are you still with me? Come around the back here. Oh, yes, yeah, still with me. All right, it's not really changing a lot. I'm just going to go with it, okay? Going to go with it. All right, are oh, we ready? Hopefully I've mixed up enough. Uh, 55 grams in each. Um, here we go. Pouring on. I won't scrape it all out. I'll just make sure that it's not gonna overflow just at the moment. I've only ever used black on these. I haven't used a colour, so I'm not sure exactly how it's going to work, but hopefully it will work. This blue's really dark. It's almost black. Okay. Now, let me just have a look across the top. Actually, I'll give it a quick torch because I can see lots of bubbles there. Be really, really careful when you're using a torch. Don't get close to your mould. Better off coming, like doing a light torch, waiting a few minutes for the bubbles to rise and then doing another little torch rather than over torching and getting it too hot and fusing your silicone to your resin. That 
was pretty well worked out 55 grams each that's just under two ounces if if you've got these and you make up two ounces of each you should be cooking with gas should be all good I like them to be right up to the top so that I don't get that little lip that you have to sand off. Okay, that's it. These two are acting like markers. You know how they pull everything from the outside in? I guess that one is as well. I just can't see it as well because it's darker. All right, so, um, yeah, like I said, there's not much more to do, to say. <laughs> I just have to wait now until, um, well, I don't even have to wait till tomorrow. I can just wait until later on tonight because they will be ready to unmold later on tonight. What's the time? It's 2 p.m. I'll be able to do them in like <clears throat> six to eight hours. I'll be able to unmold because it's getting warmer now where I am. We're in spring and it's warming up. You'd think it was almost summer. So hopefully these are going to be dark enough to actually show the holographics. I mean, ideally black, I guess, would be the best because it's really dark. But I wanted to see what would happen with the colour. So I'll give that a few minutes and uh, I'll come back and do another torch. And uh, then I will see you for the unmoulding later on this evening. All right. Let me get my gloves off. I struggle to get my gloves off so that I can turn my camera off. Ah, there we go. Got it. Hey guys, it's uh, 7.15 p.m. and these are set. That was quick, wasn't it? So... Let's get them out and have a little look. I'll try not to get the ring light in the way too much. Let's just move out of the way for a minute. Look, Mickey Mouse ears. <laughs> All right. Um, I hope they work. Now, with these holographic molds, be really careful not to touch the inside of the mold with your fingers because you'll leave a fingerprint. And don't rub it, like don't get some alcohol spray and spray it and wipe it with a cloth. You'll leave streaks. If you need to clean it, just tap it with the, um, a bit of tape, okay? Otherwise, you're going to, um, yeah, you're going to leave smears and streaks and things and then you'll ruin your mould. So just be really careful not to touch the inside of your mould, okay? Got it? Clear as mud? You don't want to ruin that. Is this still bendy? Mm, all right. Are we ready? Let's have, hope it worked. Oh, oh my gosh. <gasps> wow. Look at that. Look at it on the green background. Oh, that is amaze balls. Wow. So this is the one I've called Prism. I just think it looks prismatic <laughs> I don't even know if that's a word <laughs> oh wow when you look straight down at it it just looks like a green like green grass and then when you catch it like that in the um, <clears throat> in the ring light the fluoro light oh, it's just amazing <gasps> wow look at it doing its little dance Look at all those colours. You just can't stop looking at these, can you? Now, you could, if you wanted to, drill a hole in it and join the three together with like a little chain or crystals and um, hang them somewhere. Um, the other thing you could do is not fill the mould all the way, like just fill it halfway and do two and then like stick them back to back. That way when they spin, you'll have colour on each side in your window or hanging it outside or something. So that's a good idea. Or, look, you could just um, 
put, put some felt on the back or some cork or those little silicone bumpers and just use it as a coaster. So it'd be a real talking, talking point, wouldn't it? But you have to, if you are going to put hot things on coasters, um, this particular resin is heat resistant to 80 degrees Celsius. So it, it can have a coffee or a tea, you know, with a splash of milk in it, 80 degrees. But you have to wait about 30 days for your resin to cure up totally before you can go and put a hot thing on it. Otherwise, it'll leave a ring. All right. Enough of that. Let's move on. You just sit there and look gorgeous. Now, this was the navy one. Again, make sure you don't touch the inside of your mold. Be very careful. Just going to touch the outside of my piece. Put these over here. They're still sparkling, even though they've got nothing in them. All right. Oh, I've got a little bubble there. Never mind. Right. Are we ready for the navy blue one? Oh. Wow, wow, wow. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. <gasps> you just have to catch it in the exact right light, don't you? And it just, it just is magical. Look at that. Isn't it amazing how it does that? So you can imagine, like, if you put your finger on this and leave a fingerprint, that fingerprint will then be transferred through your resin and it'll come out on your coaster. Now the other thing, do not pour clear resin on the tops of your holographic coasters, okay? Because once you pour clear over the top of this, um, you'll lose that effect. It'll just be gone and it'll just be like that, okay? And you'll have two plain coasters. So do not try to top coat it. It won't work. The whole idea is leaving it like that, okay? So please don't try and top coat it. Your holographic effect will be lost and you'll just have a plain coaster on both sides. That's no fun at all, is it? All right, now this was the purple one. Oh, look at that. Again, just amazing. I don't think it matters if you've got the purple or the green or the blue or the black. Like, they still look amazing. This one is the shattered glass. So depending on which way you look at it, you'll see plain background or you'll see shards of glistening glass, so to speak. I wonder what it'll look like without the ring light. Shall we turn the ring light off and just see if we get any kind of reaction? Yep, still do, just not as much without a bright light. I mean it's dark in the studio at the moment. Put the ring light back on. So this is the sort of natural light that you'd get. If you hung this in your kitchen window or um, outside, which is your favourite? I love this one. <laughs> it's so pretty. It's got a bit of this one, that one in it, this one. <laughs> it's got a bit of everything in it. All right, that's enough playing. I could stare at these all day long, really. Okay, thanks for watching, you guys. Hope you've enjoyed that little video. And, um, yeah, jump onto my eBay store. Grab yourself one, two, or three of these. Um, I have listed them in a set of three just to help you save on shipping. Oh, I love it. I'm so excited. <gasps> I'm going to be looking at them all night. All right. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you real soon for the next video. Okay. Love you all. Bye for now.